Hi guys, welcome back to Anne Griffin Studio. So this week I have been making some ritual circle centerpieces again. This is part two. Uh, so there's three more ideas here and uh, one is a floating crystal, one is the skull pillar and one is the standing portal doorway thing. Um, the idea with these is this just as something just to dress up a room just to dress up some dungeons and make them look interesting and cool also adding some really interesting pieces for people and players to to investigate and you know you could arguably make a whole mission surrounding one of these pieces i love making these interesting bizarre artifacts uh, buildings that that can create entire encounters around them and uh, yeah these are really interesting these pieces uh, the the doorway is possibly my favourite piece, kind of like a modular piece of modular terrain to go on a modular ritual circle. So it's like terrain inception, terrain inception, which is cool. And um, yeah, so it's a really useful piece. It is like terrain inception. Let's crack on. All right, so the first thing I did is I took seven pieces of XPS form and I set them on top of each other. And each of these layers is one centimeter thick and I ran it through the proxon and cut a circle piece out of all of them at the same time and then these are going to be my layers of the pillar so I just cut out some notches using an exacto knife I didn't want to be too kind of bothered about this being uh, symmetrical so I just kind of eyeballed it uh, my design was that the holes in this pillar would be quite randomly placed and uh, not particularly uniform. And so after cutting out two notches in all seven pieces I moved on to the base. For this I just wanted to put a pretty basic kind of slab pattern and I used my uh, my jig that I use on the procs on here just to help carve a, a nice neat circle. And I put some dividers in there for the bricks and then once those were done I beveled the edges of those with my little beveling tool that I And with a pretty cool looking brick pattern, I then decided to texture the base with the aluminium ball all around the edges as well, don't forget those because they'll be unsure. And then I decided to make a cap so it's just a smaller circle and uh, this would just sit on top of the pillow and finish it off nicely. And then I decided to uh, do the edges of each layer and then just glued them in with some hot glue and stacked them up kind of neatly nice and flush with each other but I wanted the holes to appear kind of random all the way around them so the little notches that have been cut out there I, I just randomly spaced I didn't even attempt to make these even kind of uniform And there you go, this is the effect I'm looking for. And I just added the cap on top with some hot glue as well. Then it's time to add the Mod Podge and black paint as my undercoat. Then we're going to do a nice heavy dry brush or an over brush with uh, some medium grey and that should help pick out all that detail. Right, and now with that layer dry it's time to add the wash so just I use a, a squeezy bottle and I just kind of pour it on pretty thick and then 
try and move it around as best I can. I think doing this method is um, it's definitely a skill in its own right. Moving washes around on terrain and even models is really vital just to work it into those uh, crevices and pick out all that detail. Then I added some super glue to these holes and I put some Games Workshop skulls in. I went with mostly human skulls but there is one kind of odd looking one in there too just for a bit of uh, visual interest and I had some moss and there's some candles there on the base as well which got painted up nicely. And then there you go, that's it, all done. One finished skull pillar. Alright, for the floating crystal I used a piece of 2cm thick XPS form. I didn't have anything else that I could use as a crystal. I thought maybe using an actual real mineral crystal would have actually worked quite well, but it might be a little bit heavy for the final product. So I used a form one that I just cut using a proxon and uh, I added a small piece of kind of construction paper around the side just uh, to act as some banding later on. And so with the crystal pretty much prepared, I then took a piece of the two inch wide uh, bases that I'm using for these. And I've also got some bits of chain and a few, I don't know what these are called, maybe kind of jewelry loops or something. They're just kind of basic uh, costume jewelry pieces, which I managed to find on some uh, old bits that my sisters gave me and I'm just threading the chains onto them now uh, using some needle nose pliers there to separate the loops and feed the chains into them and then closing the loop up and eventually you get something looking like that so I made three of those and then with the base I kind of beveled in the inside circle here like just use the bottom part of my X-Acto knife because the the texture of it is uh, kind of curved and quite a nice shape and it just made this really nice neat circle in the middle nice and smooth looks really good but I want to add a little bit more detail to that so I cut in a few pavement slabs I've got three chains so I want to do three slabs and I just beveled the detail in a little bit more there and I added some glyphs or symbols or something. I have no idea what any of these mean, but I think they were kind of zodiac symbols, maybe. So yeah, just a few of those using a fine end of a cocktail stick. I also made sure to leave a few gaps. So there's three gaps there between the symbols, ready for the chains to attach to the base. And then I started to undercoat it with some mud podge and black paint. but also I am kind of an idiot and I forgot to texture it. So this is me fixing that mistake. Bit of a dirty aluminium ball now, but never mind. And then the usual dry brush. I want to make sure that I missed out the middle bit because I had plans for that, though I wasn't sure what they were yet. Okay, so I found a green in my drawer that I was going to use for this crystal and it wasn't quite as vibrant as I was hoping and it would definitely take at least two or three coats, I think. So I wasn't particularly happy. I went back and got a more vibrant green and this one was much better. I wanted more of a word stone appearance which is a Warhammer Fantasy kind of solidified chaotic magic type mineral and um, it's uh, yeah it's very kind of bright green and it's uh, revered a lot by a lot of uh, different races. Now I wanted to give it a kind of shiny appearance so I took some gloss Mod Podge and mixed that with the green just to kind of speed the process up a little bit. In retrospect it probably would have been better just to apply another coat of green and then apply the, a Mod Podge gloss coat afterwards but I did this because I was impatient and <laughs> these things happen but it still turned out pretty good. A 
Now the center of the base there has been painted with a kind of a, a starry sky kind of appearance. Um, I've just taken some of the uh, pins with the chains attached to them and I'm pushing them through the banding that was placed around the crystal, pushing them into the form. This is something you couldn't do obviously if you used a real crystal. So this, is, this was another reason I was using the, uh, the form instead to make the crystals. This would be very difficult otherwise. Then I placed the other three ends of the loops in the base. Again, just push them in, and then I believe I kind of solidified them in there with a little bit of uh, super glue. I mean, a very small bit of super glue. Thankfully, the uh, form was entirely sealed by the Mod Podge. Then I attached the chain to the loops that were in the base. Uh, this is the only way I could do this was to use tweezers. Um, this is by far the most fiddly part of the whole project. And then just close the loops up with the needle nose pliers again. But these chains are going to have to be a lot more rigid than this. So I hung it upside down using my table vise and a pair of tweezers to grip it. And then I applied super glue all the way down the length of the chains, being careful not to get too much of a gloopy texture. Uh, anywhere along the length of it and now it's nice and rigid and straight and it stands up pretty well. Now I like that kind of starry sky look um, but it was looking a little bit lackluster so I added some luster using some UV resin. And there you have it, nice floating crystal, mysterious as hell. Alright, and now for the third and final piece of this video. So this is the standing door. Uh, the idea of, of this was to take a piece of 10mm thick XPS form, cut it into an archway and then slice that into three pieces uh, using a proxon cutter. Now I then cut away the archway section from the two support pillars sections. And this was going to allow us to modify the middle layer. So placing the top and bottom layers to one side, we're going to make a few cuts on the middle layer and the idea is that we mark off one or two millimeters along the edges of each support pillar and also one or two millimeters around the archway section as well. And then after using an X-Acto knife and just slicing them away, what we have here is a much wider archway in the middle layer of the standing door. Then we just have to reassemble the layers in order and using some hot glue. This is actually a really quick and really easy process. Now this door also needs a base and a little bit of embellishment, so I cut out a few of these little small sections here, these are just to, to go on the top and the bottom of the door and around the base to give it some visual interest and a bit more texture. So I textured them with the aluminium ball. And 
and then I use some hot glue to stick these parts together. This is kind of a doorstep situation here and then just kind of add the kind of semicircular bits there as a bit of embellishment to give it a nice little stepped effect. Okay, and then I just cut in a few pavement slabs and brickworks and things around the edges. Obviously beveled them in as well. Now here you can see I've added a few little bits of drinking straw there to the support pillars of the door and then I'm just going to put a hot glue on there and stick it down to the doorstep. Uh, one pillar at a time though because you want to make sure that these definitely line up and they're not kind of skew with. You'll also notice I've had some very tiny neodymium magnets to the support pillars there at the top and some opposing magnets to the underside of the archway so that they are now magnetized and you can remove the portal door in the middle like so and now you've got a modular portal door like so. And then I just neatened up the sides with some construction paper. And I hot glued that into place. Then I added a kind of XPS form slab to the top. I figured that would look a little bit better than the construction paper. There you go, almost done, ready for mud podging and black paint. So here we go with the undercoat, mud podge, black paint, over the whole thing. And then a good heavy dry brush of the medium grey again. And then the usual dungeon style wash that I use for everything. Get in all those cracks and crevices, all that texture in between the slabs. And there you have the empty door. I added some candles and some moss to the base because obviously that's what I do. How about a mirror? or some kind of weird warp tunnel or maybe even a kind of starry night sky you know what perhaps you're a minecraft fan and you want a kind of nether portal inspired doorway or perhaps just kind of blue sky with some nice purple clouds Maybe just a regular wooden door. Very subtle and understated. How about a psychedelic kind of green vine look? Really anything that you can think of is a, is a good portal for a door. Depending on where you're going of course. This one's just a kind of blue pink swirl painted on some acetate sheet. And then maybe my favourite one. The door of blood. There we go guys, all finished. So um, I'll just quickly show you the, uh, the standing doll here. It's got the uh, the kind of swirling blue pink portal door in it. This is actually made on some acetate sheets so the light passes through it, which is nice. But if I just show you the you know the the magnets on the underside, and you can just take that out. And let's put in the doorway of blood because it's weird and cool and put the top back on and there you go the way of blood sweet um yeah super useful 
the idea with this um, with this piece was that you could rotate the door in game and it would potentially open different portals to different places uh, and that way you could send you guys anywhere I mean this could be the the central hope of an entire encounter campaign going on um, you could send your people your party and players to all different kinds of places with uh, tons of tons of these different portals which I've made here yeah so just like interesting little I mean you can make tons of these things you know there's there's loads so yeah go nuts it's really cool okay that's it for this video I think um, I've got Instagram set up at the moment so I'll put that here I'm also on Facebook if you're interested in that so feel free to go on there and follow me on there and I have some Amazon affiliate links if you are in the UK I'll put them in the description below feel free to, to look at them if you want to buy anything like I think there's foam on there proxon table cutter hot wire thing um, balsa wood bod podge things like that a few different links if you want to check them out it doesn't cost you any more just gives me a bit of a finder's fee it helps to support the channel so if there's anything else then uh, feel free to let me know in the comments and things like that let me know if you liked this video or feel free to subscribe if you haven't already and uh, yeah that's it for this one I'll see you again next time thanks for stopping by stay safe and happy crafting